now seen a lot of organizations using the, uh, the ERP SIM software, and it's, it's quite remarkable. Um, every organization looks at it slightly differently because um, simulations, in a way, are, are a kind of a game that would be called a frame. And inside that frame, although there are certain parameters that can't be changed, you can load almost any content in that frame. So one organization said this would be an absolutely fabulous way to help our, uh, our high potentials, our new leaders, both go through a business simulation and in addition learn the basics of SAP, which they, didn't, which they had never done before, even though their organization was entirely dependent on ERP and this ERP software. These executives had never touched it. So they were able to both do the business simulation and learn the ERP in kind of in one event. So that's one example. Another organization said, this is the perfect way to, to kick off the, uh, the work of our implementation team in a new project. A second, another organization, very, very large organization said, you know, we've been using this for a while, but we believe we've hit a plateau. We believe people are kind of using it mechanistically. They've learned their own transactions, siloed thinking. No one's talking. Uh, in, in a sense, everyone's pushing the button they've been taught to push, but no one's really thinking. That organization said, let's use it as a way of kind of expanding the possibilities of the thinking about this, about the ERP, and getting people to, to use it perhaps in new ways in order to, to sort of open it up. Very specifically, one organization said, can we, take the, can we take the game as it sits and um, but sort of emphasize the procurement process? Because although we want them to know the entire cash-to-cash -cash cycle, we want them to practice um, uh, the, the procurement, you know, procurement to pay. They, we want to they, they wanna, wanna know that they know how to uh, pull a purchase order and, and, and do a purchase requisition. We want them to know how to, but also why. So could we expand that section but still let them play the whole game? And the answer, of course, was yes. Another organization said, well, what we really want to do is focus on, on, on the other side, you know, on the demand side. We want to we work on, the, on, on, the, uh, you know, on how do we get sales orders through, how do we do invoices, because that's what our people really are focused on. And yet, we want them to see the entire cycle. And again, we were able to take the game and very quickly kind of expand the, uh, the demand side, or we can expand the supply side, or we can, we can expand the production side. In whatever, what, whatever the organization says is the place they want to focus, we're able to, um, we're able to take fairly automated processes, which allow almost anyone to do it, and um, allow them to be done more and more manually, depending upon the organization's objectives, so people can actually master skills. A lot of times when I, when I go out with, with ERP SIM, We'll go, to a, uh, we'll go to an organization and, and we'll talk about it. And they'll say, well, yeah, you know, interesting idea. But can you show us something? It's very difficult to show. I mean, because I can show them what happens, but what they see is they can see some code. They can look at SAP, and they can see an order showing up. No fun. So we've devised what we call a demonstration game. It lasts about two hours. And uh, we bring maybe 10 or 12, 15 people into a room. We've, we quickly teach them a couple of transactions, and then we let them try to make money using SAP, using the ERP, using the simulator. While they're doing that, I get their permission, of course. Uh, I, I, I go around and I take snapshots of their physical, uh, of the way they look. And at the end, when we start the debrief of the game, I show them themselves when they were learning. And the laughter that we hear is, is, is infectious and heartwarming. Because they look at themselves and they say, that's the way I looked when I was using SAP? I was having so much fun. One beautiful story, we were in a, we were in a government agency, and there was one gentleman who uh, I got a picture of him actually laughing. And when I showed the pictures to the students, they, you know, this guy's name was Sam, I believe, they say, oh my gosh. Sam is smiling. We've worked with Sam for 10 years. We've never seen him smile. Um, I often take pictures of people's faces and the interactions between them because they're intense. I often also will take pictures of people's feet 
because some people who tend to very much guard their physical expression from, from the shoulders up, their foot's moving like this. So I take a little movie of their foot and show them the amount of energy, the amount of tension in the room. Now, that engagement, that physical engagement, means that there's adrenaline in the body. There's, there's, there's a charge in the body. And we learn better. We learn better. We retain better when there's a, when there's a moderate charge. Now, there's some people who argue if the charge gets too high, that learning actually starts to degrade, and we just start to react. But we, ma we, we, we manage that. And if things get too intense, we actually have some dials on our, on our simulator. We can actually crank it down a little bit if the competition becomes too fierce. We can make the game a little easier so everyone can have some success. Uh, and, and conversely, if everyone's having too much success, we can crank it up a little bit and add a little bit of tension. Because what we're trying to do is we're orchestrating, we're orchestrating a level of charge that we feel is kind of optimal for learning.